This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. is calling this world Alma de Shika, the world of light. That's how he calls this world. Alma de Shika, the world of light. And when we're trying to understand how come, how can it be that the world that is the creation of Hashem, it will be the world of light. How can it be? The Creator, He wanted to put us in a place like that, that we will achieve something that is so great that it's His closeness, to be close to Him, to the Creator Himself. But not only that He wanted to give that thing to us, on top of that He wanted us to be worthy to receive that amazing gift. Before of time, before of the creation, so we were ho holy souls and we were all in heaven. And over there in heaven, there was no separation between the bodies. We were all united as one general soul with the Creator Himself in the sea of souls. And everything was endless, it was infinity. It was beautiful, it was shining, illuminating. We had all the, all of our needs, we didn't have no lacking, there was no poverty, no hunger, no darkness, no, no constrictions. So then the Creator was living in and out inside of us and everything was one and we were one. And the Creator, He wanted to give us something. He wanted to give His love to us, but we could not, as souls that were part of Him, couldn't realize His greatness because we were experiencing Him and His glory and His beauty all of the time. So we were not able to enjoy from what that we had because we didn't know different. We didn't know something else. We never experienced nothing else that we will appreciate what that we already had, what that we were enjoying from. So then the Creator decided, took that decision to create the world, and the world itself is a certain kind of curtain, it's a thickness that is separating us from our source, from our root, and by that it's being called the world of separation, the world of light, Alma Dashika. Because the separation from the Creator is a light. That's the light. The creation, the act of creating the world to create a separation between the one to itself, to who that we are today, separated from Him, is a light. So in the world of lie, all of our mission is basically to break that lie and to find the truth. The truth is the unity. The truth is that belief that it's all one. That there are no bodies and that there are no separations and that there are no 
obstacles along the way. And whatever that we see with our eyes, we need to know not to count on that. Not to believe in that. Like the, the verse is saying, Um sakrot enayim. And it's written like the words, Meshakrot enayim. The eyes are lying to you. The verse is saying that the eyes are lying to you. You look at the wall and you think, oh, there's a wall here. You look at the table and you say, oh, there's a table here. There's no table here. It's a lie. You see a house. There's no house here. That house that you see is a lie, is a separation, is blocking the light of the Creator, of endless, of infinity, of eternity, from you. And now you're stuck in that house, you're stuck in that table, you're stuck in your dreams, in your hopes, in your thoughts, in your fears, in books. But the Creator Himself is above all of that, and He sent us to that dark world, to that thick darkness, with that mission that we will break that code, that we will come out from the world of separations, and then complete our faith, and gonna come back to Him to complete unity. And the only way to do that is through prayer. Only through prayer. Only through through holding strongly with all of our power in faith that it's all one that we need to call Hashem and to call Him and to call Him and to scream to Him and to beg and to hope and to yearn and to express our thoughts and our hopes and our dreams and to express it with truth because only through that truth we can pull the blessing of the Creator back to our place because like we said, the separation is the lie itself. So as long as you believe in the separation, you believe that you're limited, you believe that you have only so and so, you believe that you can achieve only this and that, and you feel the separations, and you, f and you, and, and you run your life under those constrictions, under those rules of, 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 of limitations, so then you're still trapped in that world of light. But when you're closing your eyes and you're throwing yourself into the water, into the deep water of faith, and you work on your faith to believe in the unity of the Creator, so then the, wor the lie of the world, the world of separations, is not blocking you and it cannot hold you back from coming back to your true potential to become one with the Creator Himself. Now, for people like us that are following a certain tradition, we have a big problem. Why? Because also the religion itself been shaped into the physical world. Also the wisdom of the Creator and His message and His intention been written to us in physical books. It's written in the Gemara, in the Mishnayot, in the holy books. It's being said by the mouths of people, of rabbis, of righteous people. It became thick because that it touched the physicality of the world. And the world is a world of lie even though that it contains a lot of truth. A person that is telling you, look at the sun, how bright it is, and you look at the sun, and you see that the sun is bright. You see light comes out of the sun, and it seems to be the truth. But the real truth is that the light of the sun is making complete darkness down to the world by doing what? By making people believe that the Sun provides the light and not the Creator Himself. Now people are looking at the Sun and they think, oh look at the Sun, it's so shiny, it's so amazing, it spreads the light to the side, it gives light to the world. And the truth is that Hashem, the Creator of the world, 
He's the only one that really brings light to the world. And the sun is just hanged over there and being used by him to hide the fact that he is the one that is illuminating the world with his love, with his wisdom, with his will. So the light that for us, through our eyes, was the source of light, is actually just blocking the light of truth from our eyes. Now also the verses of the Torah and also the real intention of the Creator when it's being passed by people from one to the other, from one generation to the next while it's being written in the most holiest books of them all still it's being trapped in physicality and there is an aspect of lie a certain holding of lie that is holding those verses, that is holding those holy intentions of the Creator, and we must find the spiritual connection to our tradition and to the truth, and not to fall in the trap of lie, of the world of lie, of Alma de Shika. That's why it's written that if a person cleaned himself enough, so the Torah will become potion of life for him. And if the person have not done that, have not purified himself well enough, so it can become a lethal poison that can kill him. And you see many people that are learning Torah and dedicate their lives for keeping Torah mitzvot and doing as much as they can, and it's killing them. It's killing them. It's blocking their minds. It's making them to ignore their families, it makes them to be um, very, uh, very uh, judgmental about other people, it makes them feel very critical in every situation, very tense, oh, I'm not fulfilling my obligation, they want to be so strict, and it's beyond their power. And the fire of the Torah inside of them is burning them and killing them while they're trying to do the best that they can, and they're failing. And not only that, that they're failing, they're making other people fail as well. And losing their innocent connection to the Creator because of the Torah so-called. And it's not the Torah's fault. It's the fact that people are not searching for the truth while keeping Torah mitzvot, while learning the wisdom of the Creator. The Creator is telling us all of the time, in all the verses, and we can see that in the amazing, amazing individual private supervision that runs our lives. That the Creator, He loves us. Someone that loves you, He will wait for you. He will not going to kill you. He will support you. He will give good things to you and to all of your beloved ones. He will support you, will hug you, will love you, will carry you. He will show you, He will open doors for you, He will offer you, He will give many things to you. But in our world, we're suffering from many, many difficulties. And because that we find it very, very hard to explain, how can it be? that in this world that's supposed to be run by the Creator, there are so many judgments and so many coverings and so many decrees and so many horrible hours. How can we explain it? So people are jumping to conclusions. People are following certain other people's opinions that are not really holding the real truth of the Creator. And those people become sad and depressed and worried and scared and afraid and frustrated from the supervision of the Creator on them. And it's only because that they cannot really understand the act of Hashem, the work of Hashem. They cannot really find the truth of Hashem in Barach in His creation. And they're just falling into that trap of the evil inclination that is telling them negative and bad things about the Creator Himself. And they're losing their connection to the truth while trying to do the best that they can.
So they're waking up early in the morning and they're trying to do the best that they can and they're running and they're going and they're taking care of many, many things every day. But in the end of the day, they're losing their happiness. They're losing their joy. But the verse is saying, When you are walking in the straight path of the Creator, you will achieve complete happiness. It will bring complete happiness to your heart. So every time that we're finding ourselves falling to sadness, to depression, to negativity, to angers, to frustrations, we must understand that we already failed and fell in the trap of the evil inclination that is telling us negative and bad things about the Creator that created this world. And we're not catching the truth and we're falling into the darkness of physicality of this world. So in every situation in our lives we must stop and we must try to find the spirit of the Creator and not only the shape and the, and the structure of His creation. Okay, something happened right now. There is a hidden message inside that situation. There is something more to it. You can find yourself with a small amount of money and having a huge blessing with that money and can spend it and spend it and spend it and it never ends and in the other side you can find yourself with huge amount of money and it runs between your fingers and you just lost it and you can't find no leftovers for that amount because the blessing of Hashem Barach is the blessing that will make you rich only when He wants to give you that success, you will succeed. Not money will make you rich. Not power will make you strong. Not beauty will make you important and not wealth and not health. Nothing. Only the blessing of Hashem. And who holds that blessing? The verse is saying, Ish emunot rav wachot. A man of faith, he holds the blessing. A man of faith is a person that believes in the Creator, even in the darkest hours of his life. Believes in the Creator, he's not remembering that the Creator is the one that is punishing him. Believe in the Creator is to believe in the goodness of the Creator, in the kindness of the Creator, in the endless, unconditional love of the Creator. And even in the darkest hours, it means even in those times that we cannot recognize the blessing, that we cannot see the beauty, that it seems to be so dark and so hard and so awful. But you, with your faith, you're forcing your mind to believe in the Creator by searching for His real intention and you're not letting the separations and the definitions and all kinds of limitations of the physical world to hold you back from having that complete faith in His goodness. It depends in our decision. It depends in our decision to throw ourselves into the depths of the water by knowing and counting on Him that He will be that one to give us that lifeline, to reach out to us and to help us and to redeem us. Because today in this world, that we, supposed to be the messengers of the Creator, we're supposed to go and to spread the light, we're supposed to share the wisdom of Hashem with the nations, with the world, with people. We must tell everyone how great Hashem is. And if in our houses we're still not holding in that simple faith, how in the world we will find the power to go and to spread something that we don't have? something that we don't hold. If you still fall to sadness, to depression, to your negativity, to all kinds of confusions, so how can you go and, and strengthen someone else? How can you go and, and, and stabilize someone that is shaky? You're not able to do that. Until you will come to that place, that happiness will shine out from your face, that light will come out from your mouth, from your eyes, from your look, from your heart, only in that moment you will be able to watch the world with that simple faith and to affect other people. So how can we reach that place? Only if we're going to work on ourselves not to let the evil inclination 
break our spirits. So for that we must talk to the Creator. For that we must have that relationship with Him on daily basis. And that relationship must be based on that inner search for the truth. We must go and express our hearts to Him in the most honest way of them all, just to express the truth, to ask for guidance, to tell Him, look, we don't understand, what do you want? What's going on? I cannot figure it all out, I don't understand what you want from me. I need your help, I need to feel your love, I need to feel your warmth, I need to feel your support, I can't find it. I'm so lost, I'm so confused, I need your help, I need your guidings. And you must do that in your own life, in your own life, in the difficult hours of your life, in times of destruction, in times of despair. That's when you need to stand up back on your feet and to talk about the truth, to tell him, listen, listen, what is going on here? What's going on? It's too much. I don't understand what you want. I don't understand what, what can I do? What's the right advice? I need your support. I need to feel loved. I need to feel that you care about me. That's the only way that we will reach the truth in the end. Because if not, if we're giving up on the mercy and on the kindness of the Creator and letting the world block the light of the truth that there is no world at all, that there are no separations, that there are no judgments at all, and that all of this world is only a world of fake, a world of lie. If we're not breaking that code, if we're not removing that screen, that curtain, we will never going to see the redemption. We won't be able to see the light of Hashem. To believe in Hashem is to believe that all of the stories from our nation's history are true. They really took place in reality. Our ancestors enjoyed the power of miracles and wonders in their lives. When Yeshua Binun was standing, he was able to stop the sun from setting down in the west. He was able to do that with the power of prayer. And when Moses hit the boulder, that stone water came out of that boulder. And there was no trick, there was no magic. There was only the Creator's will to do things above nature and to feed our nation in the desert where there was no food and to supply water where there was no water at all, at all, no water and they found water and that the righteous people had the ability to fly and to mention holy names and to find themselves above physicality and to jump from one land to the other, from one state to the next and doing it in, in three seconds. Suddenly he's in Europe, suddenly he's in, 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 in the Holy Land of Israel. Jumping from one place to the other and angels are fighting for us. And the king is standing and praying and the angels are going midnight and killing all the soldiers of the enemy. And in the morning our people waking up and they see only dead soldiers in front of their eyes. And they don't need to fight, no battle, no war at all. Hashem fought for us. Hashem won for us. Hashem saved us. We need to believe that our babies that have been thrown to the Nile because of the Egyptian soldiers and officers, they were floating above the water and they were enjoying milk and honey that they were drinking from stones. We need to believe in all those wonders, not that they took place in the past. That this is the power of the Almighty. That this is exactly what the Hashem wants to supply for us today. That when Hashem needed a big large fish to come and to take Yonah the prophet from one place to the other, He just sent him. And when Hashem wanted to open the Red Sea for Am Israel to cross the sea in dry land, He opened the sea in 12 paths, in 12 ways. And we were 
walking and the sea was standing and if people wanted to drink they could drink soft drinks soda from the walls and if people would be hungry suddenly they would find trees of sweet fruits in front of their eyes and they would just take those fruits and eat them and you need to believe that this is the power of the Almighty and if not and you're just fake from birth so you don't hold faith if you're just faking your religion and you're not really connected to the power of the Almighty that He's above the physicality of this limited creation and He can make wonders and He's making wonders on daily basis isn't it a wonder that you can hold your plastic mobile and to speak to someone that is in the other side of the world and there is reception, oh now there is no reception, oh yes there is, hey, I can hear you. How can you hear him? If not by the miracles of the Creator, you think that someone can make a device that will transfer your voice from one side of the earth to the other side? Only Hashem can do such things. Only the Creator can heal people in ways that people wouldn't be able to be healed in, in different generations. 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. That you can go into a car, into, a, into an airplane, and to fly, and to drive. The people coming up with new inventions, with new ideas, all of those things are the wonders of the Creator that are still hidden under that curtain of physicality because Hashem does not want to break the nature of creation yet for us until we will become worthy to break the code and to be rewarded on that. He wants us to believe in Him even when He's hiding His face from us. And yes, it's a challenge. Yes, it's very hard. It's the mission and the purpose of our lives. And only when we will go and ask and demand the faith from the one that holds the faith, from the one that can make all the wonders for us, only when we will approach Him with that faith that we know for sure that He can bring down wonders to this world, only then He will reveal His wonders to us and He will heal all the sick and He will open the sea for us and He will supply everything we need and people won't die anymore and there will be no hunger, no poverty, no sorrow, no kind of death and darkness in the world. The night will illuminate and shine like the day. And the wonders that we're going to see are going to be greater and bigger and larger and, and, and huger than the miracles that our ancestors saw in Egypt in the ten plagues and the amazing redemption of Moses. Making wonders, making the sky scream, making fire coming down on Mount Sinai, holy tablets being created and coming down delivered to the world. Wonders that cannot be described in the world will be tiny compared to those ones that we will see with our eyes. And the day is close. But it still depends in our inner will, in our inner desire to nullify ourselves to that divine will of the Creator. That He wants only good for us. So we must fight against our negative thoughts. The thoughts of negativity, the sad and depressed thoughts, are the thoughts that are blocking our eyes from knowing that the Creator got all the power to change the nature and to be above it. And to supply things for us above nature. In a wonderful, miraculous way that we cannot understand. And He got that power and He wants to influence that power to us and to give the staff of Hashem in our hands that we will have the power to decree and to bless and to pray and to be answered. And He wants to give us the power of those wonders. But we must clean our hearts from all kinds of foreign thoughts, all kinds of sadness. And it means that we must not fall in the traps of physicality at all. You can live with no food, and you can breathe with no oxygen, and you can drink with no water. 
and you can live in a house without paying a huge mortgage for 30 years and you can find money and you can find treasures and Hashem can supply much more than you can imagine and it's in His power to do that so for that you need to count on Him and if you find yourself that you cannot count on Him, that you find it so hard to count on Him, and the tests and difficulties are getting so hard and high that you don't know how to cross those walls, those horrible waves, and you don't have a clue what you should do with yourself, so there's only one thing you should do. You should take yourself to a serious conversation with yourself and checking with yourself what's going on. Why you don't believe in Hashem? And start checking what is holding you back. Having a serious conversation between you to your true self. It calls Yeshuvah Dat. You need to straight up your mind, to settle your mind. And to discuss it with yourself. How can it be that I saw so many miracles? That I saw so many wonders? And those wonders shown to me and proved to me so many times that Hashem in Barach is here and I do believe in His existence and I saw His wonders and His supervision on my life is so fantastic and so many times it was so clear and I made that oath and I made that swear and I knew that from now on I'm never going to drop the faith anymore and here I'm standing again with my fears, with my stress with my desires, with my lackings, with all of my weaknesses, and with all of my negativity and sadness and despair. So what's going on? What are the things that are breaking my faith? What are those things that I should fight with? How can I overpower my good inclination on my evil inclination? How can I find good advice to revive me, to give me strength and power and happiness? What are the things that are strengthening me? What are the things that are breaking my spirit? What are the things that plant positivity and hope in my heart? What are the things that are eating me and destroying me when I'm strong and happy? And you must go to make that investigation in a quiet place, in a relaxing environment, alone. To be with the voice of your truth, with the voice of your soul, calmly and quietly. To spend 20 minutes with the Creator and to ask Him, Hi, what's going on? What can I do to fix my life? How can I stabilize my mind? How can I work it all out? How can I solve my issues? How can I find happiness? Please, Hashem, guide me. Give me the right advice. That advice that Rabbi Nachman of Westlev called it the most important, highest advice of them all, the individual prayer, it bodedut, is the advice that is the main lifeline saving us from the depths of the sea. Only through that simple prayer we will connect ourselves to things that are above nature. Because the nature is forcing something is, is closing our mind to believe in certain limitations of physicality. You look at the world and you sense the weather, and you see the hour, you see the watch, the clock, you see the light, the dark, you see people, you hear rumors and people, opinions and saying, and, and, and the world is blocking your true potential. So only by taking few steps back from the world to a quiet place, to a place that you won't have no distractions without your mobile, without your Facebook, without your, 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 your text messages, without your friends, without family, without people, just you and the truth. And over there also you will have a war that your inner evil inclination will try to fight with you. Yeah, ask for money. Yeah, ask for salvations. Yes, now it's time to ask for this, for that. Now you Instead of focusing in your inner battle, in your inner war against your own fears, against the things that are pushing you over and over to your inner sadness, to your own depression, 
fight with that, to fight with your inner darkness, until your inside will shine in the brightest light of your soul, until you will find your inner root, your inner connection to your source of life, that it's the Creator Himself, with no middle man's, with no messengers along the way, with no people, without being depend on a rabbi, on a book, on a certain class, on a certain event, on a certain holiday. Just you and Hashem. Just Hashem and His endless love to every creation and creation. Only because of His endless love. Only because of His greatness. That He feels you. And He likes you. He loves you. And he wants to give you because you are his child. Based on that, open a conversation with him. And tell him, I need you. I need to feel that you love me. I need to feel that you care. I need you to remind me of your love to me. Your unconditional love to me. That conversation is the life-saving conversation. That's the conversation that will connect you to your hopes, to your dreams, to your excitement, to your satisfaction from life. Because when you're having a conversation like that, after a while, not a long time, after a few quiet minutes, suddenly things are just coming back to order. After a few short minutes, you're already going to know what is more important and what is less, on what you really need to work on and what are the nonsense that are distracting your mind and confusing you. It will be such a fast, clarifying process. But you must fight against all powers of the world to go to that quiet place and to find the time to do that in Bodhidut. The war is not in the time of it Bodhidut. The war is to take yourself to do that in Bodhidut. To break the day into half and to find that quiet time in the middle of the day, in the middle of the night, to break the sleep, to break the, 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 the habits, to break the, the, all the, your schedules, and to go and find 20 minutes for yourself to be alone in the field, in your backyard, even in your car with your air condition on, but quiet, alone, with your truth. And then talk about yourself, about your fears. What is holding me back from sharing my thoughts, from being honest, from being sincere? Why am I not able to say that I love? Why am I not able to say that I'm sorry? Why am I not able to fulfill my obligations? Why am I not able to be kind? Why am I finding myself under so much pressure? Why am I so scared? What's going on? And after you ask those questions, wait, the answer will come. It's not going to come with flashlights over the rainbow. It will come from within. You will feel. You will know. You will sense. You will understand. It will be clarified in your mind. The clouds will disappear. You will know the answer. You will think about a person. You will see and going to remember a certain situation. Hashem going to hint you. Hashem is going to communicate with you like that He's communicating with us 24 hours a day just that our mind is so confused so we cannot grab those signs. We don't get the message. But when you will go to a place that the world will not going to mean so much for you in that quiet place, you will just connect yourself to your quiet. You will connect yourself to your inner voice. In that place, you will find the ability to hear the voice of Hashem, the voice of your soul that is communicating and talking to you from within. And you will hear the voice of Hashem. You will hear the voice of His guidings. You will hear the voice of His unconditional love. 
and you will cross above all the separations and you will overpower all the challenges of your life. 20 minutes of quiet, half an hour of quiet, and in that quiet you can breathe, you can think, you can sing, you can praise, you can cry, you can hope, you can dream, you can argue, you can fight, you can complain. You must say the truth. And if you felt that you were too rude, and if you feel that you were so stubborn, so apologize, so say I'm sorry, so ask for forgiveness. But your prayers will be answered. Your honesty will be appreciated. And on that we must work. To find that power to express our emotions. To express our thoughts. To be who that we really are. And to feel comfortable to be who that we are in front of the Almighty. To talk to the Creator in our own language. Not to read texts from books, to express our hearts, the heart that's been given to you by your Creator, to express it, to talk about your life experience, to talk about the wisdom that you bought from your life experience, to share with your thoughts from your life experience while walking in the path that Hashem designed for you that He was walking with you hand in hand from day first until today, walking with you, escorting you, opening things for you, showing certain things for you, putting you to notice certain points, certain importance, opening your eyes to understand certain things. With those understandings, you need to come back to Him and to talk and to hope and to pray for your own redemption and for the wide world's redemption. To believe in Him, it's to believe in miracles. It's to believe in wonders. It's to believe that nature cannot hold back the light of the Creator. When we will believe in Him like that, there will be no separations anymore. And we will become those channels that will channel the light of wonders of the world to come down to this world and that light will disappear. That light will d destroy the light. The light will destroy the light of physicality. Our faith will break all of the negativities, all of the sad thoughts, all the horrible thoughts of despair. They will all just gonna melt, gonna disappear and fly in the wind and we will be strong and stable and inspired and it depends in our strong decision not to give up on the mercy not to give up on hope not to give up on our dreams not to fall in the traps of physicality of this limited world to go above it to hope on the world of beyond, to believe in the ancient days of the first generations and before, days before of creation, and to deliver that faith and that light to this time, to our generation, to our beloved ones, to bring the hope and the faith in wonders and in miracles to our generation, to believe in the power of the Almighty, that He can redeem us and to deliver wonders that are going to be greater than the wonders that our ancestors experienced in Egypt, being redeemed by Moses. We will be redeemed by Mashiach Tzidkenu. The Zohar Kadosh is saying Mashiach is the soul of Moses and the souls of King David together as one. This huge soul will come and going to open a path for us going to open the sea and going to walk us all in dry land. Going to deliver us all to the holy land, to the promised land. To enjoy comfort and holy wealth and health and long life to us all. But we must believe in that. We must hope for that. 
not only to quote and to say and to memorize and to function like robots or soldiers, to be real believers that expects the redemption, that knows that Mashiach can come and knock on our doors every second, to know that the power of the Almighty is above nature, that nature cannot control our lives, that it's in the power of our souls to shine and to cancel all darkness from this world forever, for good, that everyone will be healed, that everyone will succeed, that there will be no one left behind. No one will be left behind. Not even one. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.